Hey everyone, today I thought it would be fun to discuss the best and worst add-on of every killer. We won't be including meme add-ons for this video to make it feel a bit fairer. Let's get into it. Trapper's best add-on to me is between Honing Stone and Iridescent Stone. Iridescent Stone I think is slightly better though, resetting a trap at random every 30 seconds. Trapper's biggest weakness is the need to set up, so the ability for it to be done automatically helps a lot. Wax Brick is his weakest I think, increasing rescue and escape time from a trap by 33%. I think this seems good initially, but with traps now having better odds anyway, I find this add-on makes very little difference. Rarely will it help you get the down, where you wouldn't have otherwise made it to the survivor's position. Wraith's best is easy, with the coxcomb clapper, making your bell silent. Awesome for a stealth killer, and takes away the only thing that makes him not so stealthy. The Serpent Soot is an add-on that takes you out of cloak after breaking a wall or pallet, and I think is quite possibly his worst. This is situationally good, but by and large, you're best off just having control over this function, particularly as after kicking, you'll likely want your cloak speed to catch up anyway. Hillbilly's best add-on I think is Doom Engravings. This add-on bumps chainsaw speed, decreases overheat, and for the cost of slower charge-up time. It's not that much of a drawback for the speed gained, which helps a lot on loops to catch out survivors. Big Buckle reduces your terror radius by 8 meters when the chainsaw overheats. I have nothing to add. Just look at it and shake your head. Nurse's best add-on is Kavana's Last Breath which extends your blink range by 30%, but also charge time by 30%. Overall, the extra range is amazing, allowing your power to be even stronger. Spasmodic Breath is a weird add-on we've discussed before, and it basically makes you an M1 killer after landing a blink attack, and forces you into this state for 60 seconds. Super strange add-on, fun but not good at all. Shape's best add-on is Tombstone Piece, which allows him to mori a survivor after hitting tier 3. This add-on is better than the full Tombstone, with it being easier to achieve tier 3, and with less restrictions whilst having the same knock-on effect, essentially. Boyfriend's Memo is his worst add-on, giving your tier 1 a 50% longer lunge range. This is basically only good when paired with Scratch Mirror. You're never really going to spend long in tier 1 otherwise. Hag's best add-on is probably Mint Rag, an add-on that lets you teleport to any trap you want to on the map at any time, the only drawback being a 15 second cooldown. However, the ability to literally teleport anywhere you please kind of balances this out. Oddly, I would say her other eerie add-on, Waterlog Shoe, is her worst. It makes her an M1 killer essentially, and makes her traps into something like Freddy's Snares. It's a bizarre add-on, and I have no idea why it's iridescent. It's unique at least. Doctor's best add-on I think is Iridescent King, which essentially just buffs the illusionary aspect of Doctor's power exponentially. It's a long read, but that's basically what it does. Maple Knight is his weakest, and simply lets you see the outline of a shock. It's not even very clear, and really isn't too helpful. It's good maybe if you're learning Doctor. Even then, I don't think it helps much. Huntress's best add-on I think is Infantry Belt. Two more hatchets. Yeah, that's just nice. Core Stone is her weakest. Making survivors hit by a hatchet have louder grunts of pain. Super weird add-on to be honest, and not too helpful, as you're going to be attacking at range most of the time, when injured noises don't matter as much. Bubba's best add-on is award-winning chili. It basically just extends your chainsaw sweeps by 0.5 seconds which is nice. His worst, I think, is Shop Lubricant, which hides a survivor's aura for 20 seconds when you down them, with no other survivors in your terror radius. It's an extremely specific add-on that even when active, I just don't see much potential in, especially as you're going to see where they end up getting hooked anyway. Nightmare's best add-on, I think, is Red Paintbrush. It puts all survivors in the dream world at the start of the trial, and disallows them to exit via failed skill check. 
Really nice add-on that just strengthens his power and gives you an instant advantage at the start of the game. Outdoor rope is the weakest, I think allowing you to hear generator repairs from 8 meters more than usual, but only for survivors repairing in the dream world. Pig's best add-on I think is Crate of Gears. Simply put, it lets you place traps quicker, and makes box searching slower. Both are extremely nice. Utility Blades is her weakest, I think applying hemorrhage to trap survivors. Most survivors will prefer to remove their trap before healing, so this won't do much. Ideally, for trap survivors you don't want to be chasing them too, so the application of hemorrhage doesn't make much sense. Clown's best add-on is undoubtedly Redhead's pinky finger. Hitting a survivor directly with a bottle makes them exposed for the duration of intoxication. Really strong add-on, particularly paired with Clown's slowdown power. His worst add-on is probably just the Robin Feather, which decreases through cooldown by 40%. This just isn't needed really, and in general it's not the best to just spam bottles. The time between throws is fine as is. Spirit's best add-on is Yakuyoke Amulet. This add-on extends phase walks by a lot, with the downside of it having a longer cooldown, and slightly slower speed. The extra time you can spend in your phase walk though is kind of crazy. Her worst add-on I would say is Senko Hanabi, a super strange add-on that blocks vaults within 4 meters after exiting a phase for 5 seconds. It's another one of those add-ons where I don't really get the application and how it could be effective. For the most part it's just not going to work I think. Legion's best add-on is Iridescent Button which allows you to break pallets when vaulting them in frenzy. This is an add-on that applies a lot of pressure. Super simple, but effective. Their worst add-on is BFFs, probably. I adore this add-on and the concept behind it, but it's just straight up not good. It has a weird activation requirement, and a relatively weak effect that only applies in the endgame. Plague's best add-on, I think, is Black Incense. This add-on reveals survivor auras when they vomit for 3 seconds. Really strong add-on that can essentially give you a live feed of survivor locations. Her worst is Olabanum Incense. I don't think I've ever said that add-on name. <laughs> this add-on reveals survivor auras for 4 seconds after cleansing. It's a nice little effect, but you can pinpoint cleanse locations based on which pools appear, so this isn't really needed. Plague's add-ons are really solid all round though. Also, not many cleanses are going to happen during the trial. Ghostface's best add-on is probably Ghostface caught on tape. After downing a survivor, your shroud recharges instantly. Nice and simple, and incredibly helpful effect to keep your power downtime to a minimum. His worst add-on is Marked Map, which extends Sends killer instinct after being revealed by 2 seconds. This is just so worthless in my opinion, and the base time you get is plenty. Demogorgon's best add-on I actually think is Black Heart, which basically gives you a mini save the best for last effect on your shred attacks. Yeah, great for demos chase focused power. Barb's Glasses is a close second for similar reasons. Its worst add-on is Unknown Egg which recovers your teleport power 1.5 seconds quicker. This is simply ineffective, and so strange for its rarity. You're probably never going to be teleporting that much, especially back to back. Oni's best add-on is Splintered Hull, because it helps to charge your power faster. Yeah. <laughs> His worst is Polished Maydate, which increases the passive recovery of Blood Fury by a rate of 0.1 seconds. This thing is dreadful, do not use it. The passive recharge already does basically nothing, and this assists in that. Deathslinger has atrocious add-ons. I would say Warden's Keys are his best, simply reducing his reload speed, which helps to keep pressure. Jaw Smasher is his worst, increasing movement speed while aiming down sights by 1% which is literally nothing. You will not feel the difference with that. Executioner's best add-on has pretty much just always been the Burning Man painting, giving him an extended range on Punishment of the Damned, which really helps you out on loops, and to reach some windows. Leopard Print Fabric is his worst, I would say, giving an extra 0.5 seconds of Killer Instinct when a survivor walks on a trail. Add-ons that extend Killer Instinct 
just aren't good, and rarely extra time will help with that effect. Blight's best add-on is debatable, but Alchemist's Ring's ability to fully refresh tokens after landing a rush attack is just insane so I would say that. But stuff like Blighted Crow I would say is very close by. Shredded Notes I would say is his worst, substituting a rush token for a 0.33 second shorter token cooldown. I just think substituting a token is never a good idea, even for the extra speed. Twin's best add-on I think is Forest Dew. It helps him out so much and adds a degree of stealth to him. Weighty Rattle I would say is the weakest add-on, allowing you to reach survivors quicker before they can hear you. Applying Broken for 20 seconds after removing Victor. I just don't see the application there. You're probably in chase if Victor's on you. If not, then do a gen then heal to bypass the Broken. Really ineffective. Trickster's best add-on I would say is Fizz Spin Soda, which increases the initial throw rate of blades allowing you to land a lot more hits and negate the slower movement of blade throwing. His worst is on target single, which simply increases the blade decay delay by two seconds. <laughs> which again is such a small number, and not worth it really. Typically they will only be decaying if you've dropped chase anyway. If not, 2 seconds makes a tiny difference. Nemesis's best add-on I think is Depleted Ink Ribbon, which has a bunch of effects. It increases zombie movement speed, zombie respawn time, and makes zombies go to the exit gates when generators are completed. It's a nice add-on all around, that helps your power out nicely, just giving lots of little helpful buffs. His worst is Liquor Tongue, which extends the hindered status after contaminating a survivor by 0.2 seconds, which is going to make no difference to be honest. Nothing noticeable or helpful at least. Cenobite's best add-on for me is between Engineer's Fang and Impaling Wire. I would say Impaling Wire though, purely for how oppressive it can be, disallowing the very common strategy of breaking chains using the environment. Flickering television I would say is his worst, making your chain cast range 4 meters longer. This just isn't really needed. Most ideal times to use it are when survivors are closer, so this add-on makes very little difference I find. Artist's best add-on I find is Oh Grief Oh Lover. When crows swarm a survivor, the survivor is affected by the exhausted effect. Nice and simple, and great for countering the strongest perks in the game. It can be used to negate exhaustion perks both during and before a chase starts. Vibrant Obituary extends the duration that you gain Killer Instinct for by 1.5 seconds when a crow moves past a survivor. Again, the base is enough. This is just bad. Sadako's best add-on is Iridescent Videotape. This add-on allows you to keep TVs on, and therefore lets you utilize them far more often, progressing Condemned as much as possible, which is great, and forces survivors to interact with TVs more frequently. Yoichi's fishing net is her weakest, I think, simply giving a 12% quicker Condemned progression when survivors hold tapes, which they barely ever do. Dredge's best add-on is probably the very simple Malthinker's Skull, which allows you to get Nightfall faster when survivors are injured. Nightfall is great, this add-on helps a bunch. War Helmet is another Killer Instinct add-on, really useless, particularly as you already get a solid 4 seconds at base. Mastermind's best add-on is Iridescent Ouroboros Vial. This add-on is insane, applying Infection at the trial start, and then 30 seconds of Exposed when max infection is reached. Slows down the early game and helps in the mid to late. Red Herb is the worst add-on, making first aid sprays take 2 seconds longer. It's essentially a 2 second slowdown. Being generous, first aid spray is used maybe 8 times a game, meaning you're applying about 16 seconds slowdown. At points where survivors are already doing nothing, making this additional 2 seconds 
rather ineffective. Night is obviously extremely early days, but as it stands, Call to Arms is quite strong, allowing longer patrol paths and faster patrol placements, which is going to really help you get the most out of the Ghost Gang. Town Watch's Torch is an add-on that will make you undetectable for 25 seconds if guards don't damage for three hunts in a row. It basically relies on failure, which is never a good trigger requirement, particularly with it being three in a row. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and let me know what you would pick as the best and worst add-on for every killer down below. Okay, bye!